I want to talk about something today that we don't we we hear a lot about it and we read a lot about it but we never hear about living day to day with a person with dementia it's sad it, it's really sad to see the person that my husband was to the person he is now. If you could call this disease a 360, that's what it is, because it goes round and round and round and round. And some days we have good days. Some days we have bad days. And some days to me are just normal because I've lived with it for so very, very long now. And I don't want sympathy. Um, I want empathy. And those of you who are living with a spouse who has dementia, you understand why I want empathy and not sympathy. <clears throat> and I'm just hanging out here in my garage, in my jammies, because this just came across my mind as something that's really important to talk about. And what it's like to live with a person who has dementia daily. It gets really frustrating, I, I can tell you that much. Because things to you and I that are normal or are easy to figure out are not normal and easy for people with dementia to figure out. I have no idea what stage my husband is in. Um, his name is David. <clears throat> but I can tell you that he's had dementia for at least 10 plus years. I, I don't remember exactly because we've been going through it forever, it seems. The... the you got to learn to be patient. And patience is not a lot of people's virtue. But without patience and without loving them for who they are yesterday and today, they don't do well. They, they need to know that they are loved. They need to feel the love, um, whether it be a hug or a kiss or an attaboy or anything like that. Positive, good feeling things need to happen a lot for my husband who has dementia. <clears throat> uh, now, let's just talk about asking them to do something or giving them direction or asking for too many things at one time. And you and I may think that asking a person with dementia to do three things is easy. It's easy for you and I, but it is not easy for the person with dementia. And we'll take an example of the other night. Friday night, we were going to go out to eat because that's the only way I can get David in a car because he's scared to death of going in the car because he's pretty sure that I'm going to kill him or that we're going to get in a car wreck. These are things that people with dementia go through. They're not realistic. A lot of things that folks 
who have dementia are not realistic about. I've never gotten them in a car wreck, mind you. But it's very difficult to get him to go somewhere. He he loves his couch. That couch is his best buddy. He sits on that couch day in, day out. And he looks at the TV. And as a friend pointed out to me the other day, there's nothing on the TV. It's turned off. But yet, David will sit in front of that TV all day long. Sometimes with his eyes open, sometimes with his eyes closed. That's dementia. Dementia is him asking me where things go. So we've had dinner. We've gotten the mayonnaise out or we've gotten out the dressings or whatever. And he looks at me and says, does this go in the refrigerator? Well, to you and I, that's logical to him. He can't understand point A to B sometimes. And sometimes he just knows it and just puts it away. And I'm not sure how that works. Why sometimes his memory works and sometimes it doesn't. We are grateful he remembers our daughter and I. He has trouble with the animals in the house. We have a dog named Lola. We have a dog named Stella. We have a cat named Mickey and a cat named Al. A lot of times he will call Stella Bella, who used to be uh, one of our dogs that passed away oh, almost a year ago now. Um, so I usually have to test him, not really test him, but I guess just ask him what our pet's names are. And sometimes he does really good. He's got it down pat. And other days he talks about, or he'll call one of our pets, Nikki. And Nikki was a dog that we had 30 years ago but he remembers Nikki Nikki was a chihuahua none of our dogs are chihuahuas so that's another thing that happens I don't know if people with dementia get bored or what goes on with them in their brain it's, it's really hard to tell and when some things come out it just shocks you just shocks you because all of a sudden that that sense of humor that they had years ago all of a sudden just comes out just boom out it comes and sometimes he is just as funny as can be <coughs> excuse me and you get a good laugh because you have to learn to laugh with people with dementia, you have to learn to have a sense of humor with people with dementia. Because for us who do not have dementia, <coughs> some of the stuff they do is funny. And some of it's very, very sad. He has to ask every night what he needs to do to be able to go to bed. And every night the routine is the same. Take your meds. You put the dog out to go potty. You lock the door. You turn off the kitchen light and you go into the bedroom and you can get in bed. 
The day is then done for the person with dementia because those they know those are the ending things of the day. With the beginning of the day, that's kind of different. Um, I'm trying to get him into a new schedule. So we are working on getting up in the morning, have your cup of coffee, have a bite to eat, get dressed, take a shower. <coughs> now he doesn't take a shower every day. He put himself on his own schedule. He showers Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And if he forgets to take the shower, he gets a little upset because he's in that schedule. He's in that, that mode of having to do certain things every day uh, or things to be done at a certain time of day. So I'm trying to get him into a better routine. I, d I don't know how it's going to work. Remember, we are dealing with dementia. Mm. A hair in my mouth. So what we're trying to do now is we get up at stupid times of day. Um, he has a cup of coffee. And he has a muffin. And then a little while later, he'll have a bowl of cereal. So that's his morning routine. And then he usually goes back to bed because we get up at 4 o'clock in the morning. Don't ask. I guess that's the older part in us. So what I'm trying to do is incorporate into his day taking the dog out, Stella, to go for a walk because she needs to go for a walk because she's fat like me um, so he takes Stella out for a walk and I think all he does is just go around the block I don't think he goes much further which I'm delighted for that way I know if he's not back within a certain amount of time he's lost but he hasn't gotten lost yet but the good thing is, he's not waking up our neighbor at 5.30 in the morning anymore. I don't understand the logic in that one, but again, you know the answer to that one. Then all of a sudden, one day, he decided that he's no longer going to drive. He will not even drive down to the grocery, which is three minutes away. Will not do that. Will not go to the post office. Just will not get in the car, period. So, which I'm happy about. I don't want him to get lost. I don't know if he'll get lost. That's something about dementia I don't know yet. We haven't crossed that path. And there are funny things about people with dementia. Uh, and like I said, you've got to keep a sense of humor. So one day I gave him a can. I had gone grocery shopping. And I gave him a can of veggies to put away. Well, he knows that he needs to go to the cupboard. Well, I, yeah, I guess cupboard would be the closet I guess would be the better word where I have everything set up on little I don't know what they're called but you put your cans on them and when you take one out they roll new ones show up anyway he's looking at this can and he's looking at those roller shelves for lack of anything better to call them and he just can't figure out how to get it in there. And and just to see him holding that can 
and looking up at where it's supposed to go, looking back down, looking back up. He just can't figure it out. So I had to go help him. So, so that really was really funny. I guess she had to be there to see it. Um, I don't know if he conveniently forgets about doing dishes. But that is part of our routine, routine, <laughs> a routine as well. So I make dinner, or whatever meal it might be, and he's supposed to clean up. This is another one of those, does this go in the dishwasher? And it's a plate, or it's a coffee cup. But he doesn't know where they go in the dishwasher. So you got to direct him where to go with the dish in the dishwasher. And as I was talking earlier, don't give them three things to do at once. They just cannot comprehend it. So I think I was talking about the other night we were going out to eat. And his jobs, I guess you could say, before we, I, oh yeah, that's what it was. I had been at a doctor's office and I called him and I said, I'm coming to get you so we can go out to eat. I said, did you take your shower? No, this is Friday. So he, sh he showers Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Nope, didn't take my shower. Did you get dressed? Nope, didn't get dressed. Did you feed the puppies? No, nope, didn't feed the puppies. Okay. So one step at a time. Dave, get dressed. Okay, but I don't know what to wear. And I usually tell him clothes, which is probably kind of mean. But what else are you going to tell him? So I tell him, you know, put on a pair of sweats, put on a pair of blue jeans, and a sweatshirt, because that's basically what he lives in. I said, then I need you to feed the dogs. And then I need you to do something else. I, I can't remember what it was. And not a second later, when I got finished telling him what I needed him to do, I asked him, David, what are you going to do? I don't know. And this is, this is pretty common. And it's pretty frustrating, and it's pretty sad, but he literally has forgotten from the time I told him to the time I finished it, which was three things. Get dressed, feed the dogs. Now I forgot what the third one was. Anyway, so they forget. So you have to keep reminding them, and, and it's a little bit better um, I find with my husband if I just tell him one thing at a time because then I don't get so frustrated and I don't want to rip my hair out. I have my dog Stella right here with me. It's, it's sad to live with a, someone with someone with dementia because you remember what they were like before dementia. How much fun you used to have. You'd go to movies, you'd go to parties, you'd go have picnics, you would travel. You, you would do a lot of things. But when the dementia gets worse, so does the fun. It doesn't, the fun doesn't come back because they're afraid of everything. Afraid to ride in the car, Afraid of leave, leaving their home, afraid of leave, leaving their couch, because to them, that's security, and that's what they need. The person that is the caretaker has the hardest time. And it's, my husband is not violent in any way, shape, or form. I gotta put Stella down. He's not violent. He's, he's a mellow fellow. 
And I guess I'm really lucky. I've only seen him get angry once since he's had the dementia. But he's, he's a pretty good guy still. And I don't know how this works, but they seem to forget their manners. Mm -hmm. They don't know how to say thank you. They don't know how to say please. They don't know any of that. I'm going to split this up into several different portions because I think that it's important that you who are just starting to live with dementia with your partner, what you really need to hear. And yes, there are steps to dementia and I'll be damned if I can figure them out. So I will see you on the next part. Thanks for listening.